Thanks for joining us for another Tantrum House crowdfunding conniption. Today we'll be looking at Life of the Amazonia from Bad Comments. Now as always we want to make sure you're aware that our crowdfunded videos are sponsored in part by our own Kickstarter backers as well as by the creators of this game. <laughs> Thanks for joining us at Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows. And in this episode, we'll be checking out the new board game, Life of the Amazonia. It's from designer Jamie Bloom and art from Sophia King. This is a bag building, tile, and animeeple placement game for one to four players. And the game players will be working to restore land, place animals, and plant trees and flowers as well to enrich their jungle and create the most ecologically rich ecosystem. We're going to be looking at a prototype copy of the game today. And also, we're not going to be sharing any opinions in this video. We just want to give you an idea for what the game looks like and how it's played so that you can make an informed decision when it comes to being a backer. To set up the game, you'll build the waterfall of life and token resource holders as well as the boats. You'll give each player a colored pouch filled with their starting resources, their boat, a starting tile, You'll place their marker on the waterfall, and then you'll give them two unique starting animals to choose one from. You'll lay out the animal cards and animeeples you've chosen to play with, along with the tiles and nature cards. Once everything is set up, play will begin with players drawing five tokens from their bag. Players are allowed to take as many actions on their turn as they can afford, and they'll be doing things like buying better currency and better water, leaf, and fruit tokens. They will also be able to expand their terrain, grow trees, and aquatic flowers by moving along the tracks on the waterfall. Animals can be added to your terrain by paying the necessary resources, assuming that you have the correct terrain for them to be placed on. Each animal in the game will score in a different way based on its surroundings. As soon as any five animal types are depleted, everyone else will get a final turn, and then it's time to score. Players will score points based on each of their animals' goals, for any nature cards they have purchased during the game, and then for how far they have progressed on the waterfall. And then the player with the most lively ecosystem will win the game. In Life of Amazonia, you are trying to build out your section of the rainforest with beautiful flora and fauna that you'll be adding in during the game. Now on your turn, this game is at its heart a deck build, or not a deck building, a bag building game. So players will be pulling tokens from their bag, using them to spend and upgrade, and then putting all of the leftover tokens into their discard boat at the end of each round. Uh, the boat actually works as a great little funnel to be able to drop the tokens back into your bag uh, whenever your bag is empty and you would need to draw from it. So players will be buying tokens, buying animals, buying expanding their uh, rainforest, moving along the tracks of the game, trying to uh, basically just build out the most point-valued uh, jungle uh, based on the animals that you're going to be scoring with. Yep. So those animals that you select to play with during the game, there's A, B, C, D um, sets that you can select from, and you can play one of the combinations that comes in uh, the rules. That's a um, starting one, or you can make up whatever combination you'd like. There's over 60,000 different combinations, um, and they all are going to play a little bit differently. Right, and so each one of those cards will have different types of scoring patterns on them. Some of them may just give you a point for having a toucan just straight up on the board. It may be that you have to have your woodpecker next to a tree, or it might be that you'll score as many points as animals that surround a specific type of animal on the board. Uh, all the animals do feature neat little wooden meeples that are screen printed with illustrations on them. Some of them are going to be the smaller ones, some of them will be the larger ones. So larger animals actually take up two hexes. So you'll need to plan accordingly so you have enough hexes available for that animal to go on. There's three different types of hexes in the game. There's water, there's the rainforest, and wetlands. Um, so you'll need to be able to plan out where they need to go. That's right, and you do have to pay the cost necessary shown on the animal card to be able to obtain it. Then you have to be able to have an available hex to put it on only one animal per hex, so you can't like stack up your trees and your woodpeckers together. They have to be adjacent to each other. Uh, the way you're going to be buying those animals is by paying the cost shown in the bottom of the card, and you'll do that with the tokens that you pull out of your bag, and you'll be trying to get better and better tokens throughout the course of the game. Yeah, and if for some reason you can't quite purchase the item that you're hoping to that turn, you can exchange tokens, so you can have any two tokens 
Um, it could be different values. So you may be um, spending quite a bit to get something a little bit cheaper, but sometimes that may be your best move. Um, so you pay two to equal another single token. Right, so it could be a three coin and a two water that you're exchanging for one fruit, but if it gets you over that hedge or whatever that requirement is, then you're in there. The game also does award you once in a while some worker tokens, and those tokens can be used basically as wilds. They can be anything. They also don't count against your hand limit, so you do have five max tokens you're going to pull out of your bag. You can upgrade uh, some of your abilities to be able to keep more tokens from round to round in case you don't spend them all, uh, but those worker tokens don't count against your hand limit and give you a lot of flexibility in purchasing at any point in the game. There's also a solo mode for the game, and this one will be a little bit different in that the end game is going to be completely different. So depending on what you've set as your difficulty level for your solo game, um, you have a track that you'll need to get up to a certain point by the end to be able to win. Yeah, players will be using a little set of cards, they'll be pulling tokens out of the bag for the automaton, for the, the robot player that you're playing against, and you'll be trying to basically score better and, and than they do based on the number of animals that get removed, all kinds of fun stuff. There's also going to be a campaign mode in the game. We don't know anything about that. You'll have to check out their uh, Kickstarter campaign in order to learn more, but lots of fun stuff going on inside the life of the Amazona. Amazonia. If you're interested in checking that out, you can find it on Kickstarter now. And then as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in, following along, liking our videos here at Tantrum House.